volunteer. These are the voyages of the starship Poet the Poet, Robert Dunn commanding, at least on camera, and its continuing mission is to bring you the finest in poets, musicians, and space aliens available. Today, we're going to content ourselves with poets, and what poets they are, we have Francine Witt, and we have David Mark Spear, and we'll be getting to them in just a moment, but I'm going to slip something of my own to just warm up the room here. It's called Misdirected. They have sent me down the wrong highway. They have given me misleading directions. They sold me a road map for New Jersey while I'm trying to transverse Oklahoma. Even I can tell the difference between beachfront casinos and oil wells. Although I have gone bust from both in my day, this is the wrong highway. The stoplights flash in clashing colors. The walk don't walk signs flash in Esperanto. They have given me the wrong directions and the toll takers won't break a five. All my traveling companions are one step beyond comatose, and the shoulder is littered with no dumping signs. I could use a rest area with a gas pump and a snack bar, but this is a city highway, and city highways are not user-friendly. The stoplights clash with the potholes, the hydrants clash with the roadside reflectors. I was hoping for a federal highway. I would have settled for a state highway, something that would have given me a clue as to the right direction. They have given me misleading directions. They have sent me down the wrong highway. I know better than to ask for an interstate highway. I know I am not worthy of an interstate highway. My acceleration is the laughing stock of Motown because my car was assembled elsewhere. This is a city highway where parking meters bang on my power windows demanding spare change and quick yanks on their cranks. Parking meters pay off 25 to 1 in this city, but only once every 25 years. I hit one yesterday, but I did not win. Only damaged a bumper. I do not know where I am or where I'm going. My needle is starting to read empty. I cannot see the lane markers. I'm going to pull over to the side, make a blindfold out of that New Jersey map, and let my fingers do the driving from here on in. Yeah, we get nervous sometimes. Anyway, uh, before we get into Francine and, uh, and David, I want to thank uh, Coney Island High in Colorado uh, and their management of uh, Bob, Steve, and the whole gang out here, including John Denver, which is where I think they got the name of the place, for letting us come in and film. And now we have Francine Witt. Francine Witt is a high school English teacher. Won't tell you what high school, but uh, take my word for it. She's uh, got a new chapbook out called Magic in the Streets, which was published by Owl Creek Press. I believe it was a contest winner. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that in a moment. She's popped up in a number of uh, literary journals, such as Tar River Poetry, The Cream City Review. And if that's not enough for you, she's also a playwright. Uh, let's see, she's working on uh, Love is a Bad Neighborhood. And uh, many of us have tried to slip out of bad neighborhoods for all our lives, but what can we do? Francine, welcome to Poet the Poet. Thank you. Why is love such a bad neighborhood? Well, uh, because a woman walking around with her heart hanging loose is a scene waiting for a crime. Ah. <laughs> That's one of the lines from... It's, uh, it started as a monologue. Stop looking at me like that. Yeah. I'm just kind of <laughs> it started as a monologue. She's looking at me and, like uh, I'm a crime waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about a poem? And, Maybe uh, we should get on a higher uh, moral plane here. Well, all right. Um, this is called, I Think of My Mother. When youth was her best accessory. When she's standing on the dance floor, beautiful and alone. She is waiting there in black and white, the way I have seen her in photographs. Right about now, my father comes in nervous and white-faced as the moon. Of course, he too is posed, his better side pushed forward in my mind. Only this time, there is something I haven't seen before. Maybe it's the August heat that is making him sweat, or the curve of my mother's right hip as she stands there, swaying in place. He is wearing the look of a man who's convinced he may never think straight again dumbstruck until the music thuds him on the back like an older brother when he takes that first step towards her and I am about to begin. Mm -hmm. He may never think straight again, huh? Mm. Uh, you would be amazed at the number of people who said that about me. <laughs> uh, was that the crime? Yeah. Wearing, wearing one's heart, hanging out on one's sleeve and all yeah. that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
Okay. And oh, a companion piece. Right. Oh, nice. Later, um, this is uh, I wrote this in memory of my father. It's called My Father in Late Spring. Evenings, he'd come home, hat full of half ideas and broken songs. Above the clink of supper plates, we could hear the racket in his head, botched up deals, clients waiting to sue. Off to the side, my mother, a still life pose with lamb chops and green quiet peas. Later, he'd jump up and grab his guitar, sit on the stoop and strum some simple song. The neighborhood kids would come, move around him like metal filings, everyone singing along. Now in late spring, he is quiet, only the sound of cemetery birds. There is right beside him a judge, a serious man who in life might have needed a laugh now and then. And my father, he is probably making friends. Mm -hmm. That'd be Francine. Um, do you put a lot of uh, poetry into the playwriting? Uh, after all, Shakespeare pulls it off once in a while. But uh, or do you have two completely different approaches? Well, um, I I have historically mm -hmm. used two different approaches, and now I'm starting to blend them. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, Love's Bad Neighborhood is uh, intent. I'm, I'm trying to make it a play, but it's really a series of poems and monologues. But there's a dramatic, you know, through line to it. But it's really, I've never written anything quite in that way before. So it's kind of a blending of the things I, I like to, to do. And how's it coming? But it's, it's coming slowly, but it's, it's coming. Because, um, you know, I'm sort of writing it in a very different way. I can write it in very small sections, the way you write poems. Mm -hmm. And say, OK, now this happens, so I'll write this poem for this character. But whereas with a play, you're always thinking, scenes and plot and, mm -hmm. and so on. And how does that compare to teaching high school? <laughs> Besides the metal detectors, I mean. Right, well we have metal detectors in my school, so uh -oh. we do. Um, actually, that's a good thing because it makes you feel a little bit safer. But, uh, well, it's all, I mean, it's all sort of part of the same thing, which is why I like teaching. Uh, I have one actual creative writing class, which is a two-period class, which is a large part of my day. Uh -huh. And I think it's, I, I just love having a job where I can go in and talk for about an hour and a half every day about how to write a poem, mm -hmm. bring in poems that I like. What is important that you uh, try to get across to your students? The first thing is write what you really want to write. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid. And this is always my advice to people, <coughs> you know, writing poetry. I try to remember it myself at times. Don't, don't. Censor yourself. Don't. You can always do that later, um, you know, or someone will do that for you. If I followed that advice, I'd be writing IOUs uh -huh. all the time instead of poems. <laughs> um, how about another poem? Speaking of which, like you have an sure. IOU in there, you'd like to share? <laughs> okay. Um, first rain. My arms, tubed in a vinyl raincoat. It is here I learn how the skin doesn't breathe. This morning is locked in the color of dawn and mother, who opens her umbrella wide as worry, shields me to the curb where school bus doors flex open. Once aboard, I take my place in alphabetical order. Below, the motor erupts. I watch the road moving towards us, under us, and through the window, mother standing on the curb shrinking slowly to a dot. Mm -hmm. Speaking of shrinking slowly to a dot, let's slip another poem in. Okay. Deborah Carr and so on, and I, and I make this general assumption that everybody knows the movie I'm speaking about here. Um, Deborah Carr and so on. In the scene everyone knows, she falls on the beach, fixed as a footprint that won't wash away. And the others like her, Marilyn's skirt Pedaling around her waist, Ingrid's soft tears in the fog. I remember my mother twisting red lipstick from a tube, nubbing its surface, searching for the faces it promised. And the nights she tissued rouge from her cheek, sighing as my father faded like the edge of a wave 
returning to sea, the light bulb above them, hanging like a white fruit, inedible, unpicked. Below them, the carpet, a calendar of sand, where tomorrow would be another day. Mm -hmm. All right, David. Wow. What movie was that? I'll give you a hint. It was not Police Academy 9. <laughs> from, from here to eternity? You got it. Close enough. <laughs> That's it. All right. Uh, before we go off to eternity, let's slip another poem in. Okay. I'm um, sort of doing, I, I think it seems like a little biography here, autobiography. Uh, this deals with adolescence. You can't run from a sure thing. Weather is moving in from the west. My sister in Detroit phones, warns of a storm shouldering its way across, to across a helpless sky. These days, I'm struck by what we find marvelous, the miracle of disposable diapers, the hard dependability of frozen food. Nothing like the night we sneaked those first cigarettes when she told me how far a boy would go if you let him. That night, I still believed there was shelter I could take. But when mother cracked the door, try to hush our giggles and maybe the inevitable. I knew there were forecasts with no way out. Now I am safe in the past tense of adolescence, amazed I survived it at all. And tonight, as the moon comes up, its skirt of hazy light dim behind the clouds, I like to think I'm ready for storms for anything else with their sure sense of direction. Mm -hmm. Francine, when you won uh, the Owl Creek competition yes. for Magic in the Streets, did they give you any comment as to why they chose you over thousands? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it was thousands, for one thing. But I, no, they really don't. And I don't ask. Um, for some reason, mm -hmm. I, I guess. Uh, you just took the prize money I and guess, ran, huh? I guess I just said, OK. <laughs> I was very excited, actually. Okay, let's slip yeah. in one more short one. Okay. Mystery. One day, you'll just get up and eat responsibility like some new breakfast cereal. What you used to eat isn't on the shelf anymore, and the milk turns sour while you spun oldies on your stereo. But why, you ask, this morning? And how did youth slip out without waking you? without you hearing its footstep on the stair. It's a door you'll open and close a thousand times, the way you did to find out that the, refriger that the refrigerator light does go off. It does? Yes, uh -huh. it does. Oh, you saved me Robert. the trouble. Yes, it well, does. Well, <laughs> Francine Witt, magic in the streets, magic on the page. Thank you for being on Poet the Poet, and we'll Pleasure. be back in a moment with David Mark Spear. Stay with us.